Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to Couch Potato on the Road. I'm Sweet Potato. I'm Couch Potato. And today we are off work. <laughs> yeah. We, In the car. All right. <clears throat> Talking about, um, we, we're, we're going to talk about night school today. Yeah, um, night school, the first production from Kevin Hart on his own, mm -hmm. on his own production company, written by him and like six other people. Yeah, it took a lot of people to write this. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes, yeah, like a lot of people. <sighs> well, this is what we got. Okay, so we're fresh out. So we haven't even like, talked about right, it to each other right. yet. Yeah, like when I say fresh out, like we just got we out, just like, like drove away from the movie theater. Um, first thoughts were all the. I wonder what the budget was for the music and the licensing That's where because the whole budget went it because it, it didn't take place that many places if you think about it. True, but um. The reason I ask that is because all of the songs were made before 2010. Yeah, it was a lot of, like, older songs. Yeah. Now, the first song that introed the movie was, like, an Outkast song. And that made so fresh, sense. So clean. Yes. That made sense because it was, it was a flashback, a, right? Yeah. And Kevin was in high school. 2001. So that's fine, but coming into present day, 2018, we're not listening to uh, Ti. You can have whatever you like, and yeah, and the, that's what they Outcast. To. Hey y'all, we're not listening. Right, that to was that. where the main dance number was to Hey y'all. Yeah, which is like we're not listening to that. I love these songs. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like. This the money. This what you can afford for the music. I would rather you not have anything. Just get instrumentals. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway. Well, you can tell they was trying not to date it too much, but then they still you dated, dated it. it with the 2018. I mean, well, that's why when some people they try not to date their movies by using old songs from the jump. Right. But. If you're going to use them, use old classic songs. Not that these songs won't be considered classic. The thing about them is, like, we know when they came out. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, with rap songs, it's just how it is. Yeah, the nostalgia factor for people my age, our age, right. was more there. So, that it definitely made it feel like this movie was getting re-released yeah. in theaters. Like, you know, it was one of them old movies. That uh, they, you know, play in the movie theaters for, like, summer camps and stuff. Right. So, it was, like, just getting a re-release. So, it felt like something that came out a while ago. But, as you can see so far, we have not made no comments about what we liked in this movie. And uh, it wasn't... <clears throat> before, I, before I went and saw this movie, I saw I made a tweet. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Feed Me Potatoes. And I was saying that... Uh, from the reviews that I was already kind of seeing, and I'm not the type of person that let like a lot of reviews like dissuade me from going to see something if it's something no. that I just want to yeah. see. But this was I already had the case of I wasn't like hyped to see it. I do like Tiffany Haddish, and I like her um, in different media. Like I'm I'm okay with her, but I've not been excited to see a Kevin Hart movie, and I don't know how long. Right. Since well, since the movies he do with the Rocket. Pretty much, if he's not doing something with The Rock, I'm not really caring for his stuff. That's where I'm at. And, yeah. you know, Tiffany Haddish couldn't save this movie. It wasn't, like, horrible. Like, I wasn't, like, cringing the whole movie. Yeah, and the But thing I could have had a like, whole lot more fun, if I say that. Like, yeah, like, the thing yeah. is, it was a funny movie, but it wasn't, like... Funny, like I'm going, yeah, funny. like you know, typically when you going, especially for black people, child, when we going to see a comedy, a black people comedy, like we expecting to be crying, laughing, right. like I'm expecting to laugh from beginning to end, like, and I hate to use this as an example because of Tiffany Haddish, but like for Girls Trip, y'all. Y'all saw my review for Girls Trip. I was laughing the entire movie, like. 
I laughed from the beginning to the end of that movie. Right. This movie, it was like some chuckles here and there. Like, oh, okay. You know, uh, some of the jokes landed and some of them didn't. Um, some of the characters that they had, like, in his night school class, some of them were fleshed out more than others. I feel like even Ke his uh, Kevin's character, I feel like he was one two dimensional. I of mean, course. he, he had, wasn't a he full. He had one extra dimension in his other characters. I guess you could say right. Like otherwise, like his girlfriend, we ain't know nothing about her other than she was cute. They didn't and build up their relationship at all. Like, no. They didn't, they didn't build up their relationship, which is the... The sole purpose of the, what he's doing. Right, like, he's doing this whole thing, not just for himself, but for his relationship. And we don't spend no time caring about that. We spend no time with their relationship. To be honest, up until, like, the third act of the movie, right before, like, the test... They spent a lot of time, like, trying to build up Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish's chemistry. Yeah. So, it would be feeling like, oh, he gonna end up leaving his wife or fiance for Tiffany Haddish. That's how it, they were trying to, like, set up the movie. You know what I'm right. saying? They were trying to set it up off of their chemistry, and then all that got cut right, right. before. They uh, had, literally, so Kevin just, and Tiffany had more, care, like, relationship development, and Kevin and the principal had more relationship development than him and the person who he who was the motivation for the whole night school situation. Yeah. So that that kind of you know that takes away from the heart of it. And uh I like Brisha Webb as well. And I like her too. Y'all Brisha and Webb and the chick that played Monica on Monica on what? You saying Molly on Insecure? Molly. Get it together. You know what I just did? No. I, I kept wanting to say Shameless, so I combined her name and Veronica. Okay. Because I kept wanting to say Shameless, well, the girl, but it's Insecure. The girl but I like plays, those two people. I, what, isn't her name Yvonne? I think it's Yvonne who plays Molly what on up? Insecure. She was on there. But her and Brisha Webb, they were like there. But not even there a lot. And it was like, oh, hey, Molly girl. Oh, hey, right. Brisha girl. And then it was it. And, like, we only saw them a couple of times. Brisha was funny, though. But they really, like, spread her character. Like, she was in the very beginning. And in the very she, end. In the very end. And that's it. And then the chick that played Molly Vaughn, like, she was just sprinkled here and there. Right. And like, unpopular they, they didn't, opinion. They didn't even really, like, build off of the my best friend hate don't really like you. They didn't even really play with that as much as they really could uh, could have. They didn't build off of that. They didn't build off of Brisha's uh, character because her and Kevin played twins, and she was super smart, and he, he wasn't. Was yeah. He was they didn't build off of that either. Like, they made one joke about it or two jokes, and that was it. But like I was saying, unpopular opinion, I think Brisha Webb is funnier than Tiffany Haddish. I just... I don't know. I like her more. Granted, to me, they almost have the same type of comedy. Like, no, they they pretty much got the same like ghetto hood chick comedy to me. But I feel like Brisha could kind of do a little the more. The other one is more ratchet. Okay, so Brisha is more like bougetto, like and that's bougetto, that's me. So okay, I get that it. Makes, that makes sense then. Yeah, you you just like bougetto, right? Because I'm I'm not ratchet. Yeah. Oh, that was a hesitation. What you trying to say? No, I'm agreeing with oh, you. Oh, okay. Because I could get ratchet. Anyways. um, Otherwise, in the movie, I don't know. It shout didn't out have to any Pastor... moments, in my opinion, that like were memorable. No, shout out to Pastor Greenleaf. Uh, he played Kevin Hart Daddy. Um, Keith Frank. Sure. I don't be knowing the people's names. Lulu Daddy? Yeah, he The did. voice from the, he did play uh, the Nunu Prince Daddy. and the Frog. This nigga been in everything. He was in Lottery Well, ticket. right now, he Sweet passed the green leaf to me. Sweet Tooth from Lottery uh, Tooth. Well, who else? Oh, shout out to uh, the lady who played, who who the lottery winner on Green Leaf. She played Kevin Mama. I said, well, Green Leaf, Oprah, you better get your people work. You get your people work. Anyway, though, in terms of this being a first time for Kevin, I feel like it was a... Um, 
I feel like it was a good effort. I mean, he gonna make his money because there's nothing else this week. Nothing else this weekend. He gonna have the number one movie this week. Right. He picked a good weekend right. to come so, out because literally nothing else worth mentioning right. is out. Because so, we looked for something mm -hmm. else. Oh, I tried. We tried. <laughs> uh, so what we gonna have to see is how much money he makes this week and how big of a drop off he have next week. Because they got a lot of stuff coming out next week. Venom is coming out next week, isn't Venom it? is coming out. And if that's poo, he gonna be good. If, Venom, if Venom coming poo, out, that Kevin movie, Hart gonna be straight. That movie with Lady Gaga coming out. Oh. That movie with Blake Lively and uh Anna Kendrick is coming out. No clue. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember the name, but that's coming Sauce out. Like, so a lot of stuff that's like that people want to see. Because right. I want to see all three of those movies we just mentioned. And I don't know how I'm going to cram it in, child. I don't. No but I'm going to try. Well, Venom that's, number that's one. That's when A-list will come in handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, and I don't hate Kevin Hart. I agree with only a few things that Cat Williams said about him, but... Like, I admire his work ethic, and I do think that he is trying. But yeah. I do think that he needs to cut to get with some better comedic writers, you know? like Right, especially when... Okay, so this is the thing. Whenever you're talking about um, comedic acting, it's okay to have other writers, right, in the room. Because, like, everybody... When, you, when you're dealing with a movie or a TV show, like, everybody's humor is different. So you want to try to hit on everybody's type of humor. Now, for your stand-up, of course that should be you. You know what I'm saying? That should totally be you. But when you get into your movies and stuff, call on these people like, um, what's his name? That he on Blackish and King Grownish. Bears. No, the guy who plays on it, Dion. That's Dion his name. Cole. Yeah, like he's a good comedic writer. That's, yeah, he is. I just don't know what all he write on. He but, done wrote on a whole bunch of like late night uh shows and stuff like Conan, that. That's the only thing I know that he's written on. But yeah, yeah, he, yeah like he get with work, people he like get, that. Get with like some other directors that are uh have a unique style as well because that all that type of stuff makes a big difference, you know. Exactly. So it's like yeah, it's a lot of directors out here that uh have developed a unique way of filmmaking. And have unique ways of telling jokes mm -hmm. without it relying solely on how long I could tell a joke or the way I could tell a joke. You know? Yeah. So that's what Kevin Hart needs to improve on a lot. Like, Kevin Hart has comedy that's moving backwards instead of forwards. And, and then it shows. On, on Tiffany Haddish note, um,. I'm happy to see her on the rise and doing her thing. She gonna be in like another movie in a couple she of months. She got a Tyler Perry movie. She got Tika something right, which I feel like is gonna be good. Um, she got uh, some more stuff coming out at the beginning of the next yeah, year. Got, so like, she got so much stuff on the horizon. Yeah. But what I want her to do, acting wise, right? If you are gonna be like a comedic actress, because like I said, that's separate from being a you know, on stage type of comedian, like, don't get typecast. Granted, you can be a comedic actress, but I always feel like as an actor in general, try your hand at a few other types of roles. Even if you're not good at them, you still need to try to get your feet wet in showing your range because once you get, you don't, she, literally Tiffany Haddish only been out for two years in the movie world. Yeah. So... You don't want to get typecast, and it's already happening. It's already happening. This character for the teacher, she was slightly different than who she's been in well, other roles. Well, I take that. I well, I I can't. I feel like she's trying to take a few different roles. Like she's not. <clears throat> she's been taking more, um, less roles of the person that's just from the hood that just act ratchet and at least taking roles of the person that's from the hood leaving the ratchetness behind. Well yeah, like in like, this case in this she movie, was, like she was just she was just like no nonsense. So that's why that's right. how I saw her. She was in, still like a regular last, black chick. In the but... last 
well, I wouldn't say regular, but she just she wasn't extra ratchet. But in the last OG, I feel like this the this, last this OG who, was good. This is more of who her character is like the last yeah. OG because the last OG she's a person from the hood. You know what I'm saying? She started trying to live a better life and just trying to put negative hood things behind her, and then you know just raise her kids in opposite environment from what she had to live right. in. Right. But if you make her mad, like if you cross her, make her mad, the or hood come out. yeah, it it, just, it it come out. So I, I I do feel like she's trying to make right. a difference. And honestly, that show is what gives me hope for her and for her like acting career because you could see the range in the last OG. But in terms of big scale movies, right, that right. I feel like more people go see than they probably did the last OG. You know what I'm saying? You being typecast in the movie industry because between that character from a uh, girl's trip to this one and then the next one that you playing with um Tika something them you a uh, hood chick that was in jail for however long like it's we don't want that for you that's all I ain't here to criticize like that because I like both of them but you know anyway in terms of the movie. In terms of me grading it, I would say I could have watched this on Netflix. Well, yeah, from a pay or wait, <laughs> for a pay or wait standpoint, I would wait. Yeah, uh, it's gonna come up on Netflix or it's gonna play on Showtime or HBO or your cable television. Right, it's, I would wait for it to come there. Yeah, like you know, like I don't. Even, it was did they drop f bombs in this? They had a. They had some curse words, but I'm, it was like, I, you know, whatever. I, said. I, I asked if they drop F-bombs. I don't know. That's what I'm asking I for. can't remember. Because uh, the other cursing, that's irrelevant. Well, you know, they family, might have Family movies be having cursing. They might have had one or two. I, I don't I remember. Guess. But it's all right if you want to watch it with your family. Yeah, nothing you know. sexual happens in it. No. I feel like old people... Well, we had old people in our audience. They had hella old people in the. It was like senior citizens morning. Well, that's because we went to the movies early as hell, y'all. Yeah, cause no, we we want, it's like because we morning. wanted to go see the movie, but we didn't want to pay full price. Right, we wanted to catch that matinee <laughs> ticket. So, yeah, I would wait, maybe catch it. Yeah, online rental. Don't even waste the gas to go get it from Redbox. Just yeah. when it hit Amazon Prime, just rent it through there. Right. But what did you guys think of our review? Thumbs up. Let us know. Yeah, we'll give y'all a review of Venom next week. Yes. Because we actually gonna see that. So. And I'm gonna try to go see one of the other ones and give a review on that. Well, um, let us know how y'all liking the cell phone videos. We're not trying to use this as a main way, but like it's easier whenever we, you know, out and about and just want to get one off, right? Um. Anyway, this has been Couch Potato in the car. <laughs> I'm sweet potato. I'm couch potato. See you guys later.